I just want to interview Brother Jake today. Um, I don't know if many of you know him. Uh, he travels all over the world, uh, all over the United States, in his semi-truck witnessing to others. And so um, I think he is spreading the salt all over about the Father's calendar, and he is being a light to the world, as many of you are, and we want to hear from many of you today. But uh, So, Brother Jake, exactly what do you do that you uh, uh, are shedding your light and the salt to others? What kind of, uh, how do you do your witnessing? Well, um, during my downtime, during the Sabbath, um, I stop at the truck stops and I talk to people about the truths and I share a lot of things and I learn a lot of things from people um, at the truck stops. But um, if I, um, if time allows, every Saturday and Sunday I park my truck and I go and visit churches. And particularly, I visit uh, the Adventist churches. And when I come in, um, um, I listen, you know, I participate in the church service. And oftentimes, they will invite me to the potluck. So... I always address the pastor. I, I greet him. I uh, get to know him a little bit better. And I ask one and the same question every time. I ask uh, people around uh, who are present, who is the oldest Adventist here in the room? And a lot of people say, well, I'm... I've been since 1970s, since 1960s. And then I ask, uh, have you ever heard of uh, Grace Amadon Collection? It is a collection called uh, Grace Amadon, uh, collection number 154, which is being kept in, at Andrews University. Um, and they look to each other and always I've never had anyone well probably out of a thousand times that I asked maybe two or three will say oh yeah I heard that it it sounds familiar uh, but always they give me the same answer no what is that and I say well it's the biggest Sabbath study that Ad, uh, Adventist Church has ever done. Um, and what caused this um, study was uh, the Adventist Church in 1939, um, they wanted to know how William Miller, what method did William Miller use to calculate the day of disappointment of uh, 1844, October 22nd, 1844? So they made um, a committee, and the head of the committee was uh, Grace Amadon. And so uh, they went out, they did the study, and then uh, when they presented the, the findings to the church, it revealed a greater truth about the Sabbath. And I do not go into um, conversation and explain what it is. I, all I do is just plant the seed so people can start thinking, what is this Grace Amadon collection is? Mm -hmm. And um, because I don't want to engage myself into debates um, with anyone uh, because any time uh, there's a debate, it doesn't turn out well. Uh, 
So all I do is just plant the seed and let people um, basically wonder what that is. But um, what prompts me to, to do this is I recently, when I drive, I listen to a lot of books. And I listen to um, some books by Ellen White. Now, if anyone has a problem with Ellen White, um, I'm just going to ask you to deal with it. Well, in one of her books, um, I think it's, um, if you, if I remember, it's Testimonies to the Church or Early Writings. I think it's Early Writings, page 272. She had a vision. She said, uh, before uh, Yahasha comes, um, there will be a great shaking in the church. And when she had this vision, uh, she had an angel come to her and explain. She asked, what is this about, this vision? And the angel replied, the great shaking has to do with the third angel's message. And what I understood, what was revealed to me, that in this particular church, there will be, this issue will start becoming very prominent. And it will cause a lot of people um, to start questioning uh, about the Sabbath truth. And so my mission is to go out and spread the truth and just plant the seed. Mm -hmm. And good. what the the result of that will um, basically enable people to start asking questions. Yeah. And so, and that will cause the the great shaking because a lot of people will stand up and say, um, "Wait a minute, uh, we're not keeping the the true Sabbath. The Sabbath, uh, uh, the true Sabbath, the the Creator's calendar." should be kept on um, based on the phases of the moon. And so uh, I can see how that will play out, uh, how people, I already have a lot of people, um, I uh, give out my phone number and I give out uh, um, this um, website. Um, and a lot of times I share the conference call with some people that ask questions, I don't go and check who uh, gets on or who gets, I, I never ask these questions. I let people to, um, you know, kind of do it, do it on their own. But I have a lot of people contacting me and asking more questions and I keep sending them, uh, the, there is a preliminary or a short version of a Grace Amadon collection. Okay. And she's the one that helped study the church with the church to show that the Lunar Sabbath is correct. But we have that whole article here on our website, too. I want to add something. It, a matter of fact, Grace Amadon was a very prominent uh, in and very active in uh, Adventist church. She was the oh. astronomer, and she also wrote some hymns. Oh. Um, I did a little research about her, and she was very active in the Adventist church. And it's, it's very odd. It's very strange to me that nobody ever heard of her. Yeah, I never heard of her in my whole life. Um. Yeah, she um, she was a, also a historian. Um, she was a very popular figure in 1920s, 1930s um, in Adventist Church. She was very active. So she helped the church committee come up with uh, everything about the lunar calendar to show the date of the crucifixion and um, everything so that um, the church... Uh, but what did they do in 1938 and 1995 when they found out these things to be true on the calendar? What did the church do? 
um, when she presented the, the presented the findings, um, the Adventist Church actually um, rejected her findings. They they said, um, you know, Adventist Church is already being viewed as an occult, and uh, you know, uh, we can't put uh, this much burden on our members. That was their excuse. Hmm. And so we're just going to go along with keeping the Gregorian Sabbath. Um, I want to add to this. When I study the uh, book of Daniel, and when you take a look at Daniel 7.25, uh, of the book of uh, of uh, Daniel 7:25, and you translate it word by word. The idea that is behind Daniel 7:25 is that the beast system is not only going to change the day, but it's going to change the whole entire worship system. Mm -hmm. So if you go back to Leviticus 23. You read about all the um, feast days. Mm -hmm. Right. This sure. is a structure, and if you study the feast days, it's the blueprint of the plan of salvation. Mm -hmm. You see, so this blueprint of the plan of salvation is a structure of the worship system. So the beast system, the, what Rome has done, it, they didn't only change one day from uh, another, you know, seventh day to the first day of the week. They completely changed the whole worship system. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and so uh, this is very significant because um, you can look at the counterfeit system that they brought, which is their... Um, worship days. Sunday is their worship days. All the holidays is their worship days. And what is today's worldly holiday we're on right now? Um, it is, I'm sorry? Easter. Yeah, Easter is... Today. Is Ishtar. Yeah, Ishtar, yeah. Is there, it's the worship of Ishtar. It's, it's a completely, Passover. Yeah, it's a completely pagan holiday. And... Um, uh, what I want uh, to add to uh, a lot of people don't realize that all of these holidays that are pagan holidays, those are a worship days. That's right. Those are worship days. Even Halloween, right? The Halloween, all the Christian Christmas, Valentine, every, all of them are every worship holiday. Days. That's true. All the pagan holidays are the worship days. So this is why we are called out to be set apart um, right. is because we are we have to be the salt of the to the world we have to be the light to the world we have to be um, following his worship days and it's interesting um, when you study the Leviticus 23 when you study his worship days, you can see all the elements of the blueprint of the plan of salvation. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. On that note, uh, I'm going to go ahead and close the recording. And uh, for those of you that um, want to study more about the Creator's calendar, and uh, you can go to our website, lunarsabbathday.com. Uh, uh, in the article section is the Grace Almaden Collection uh, YouTube channel. I'll leave the link below about the great SDA cover-up. Uh, when they did find out the Lunar Sabbath was true in two different uh, committees that they did, 1938 and 1995, uh, to find out more about the Creator's calendar and his celebration times, his feast days times, please uh, go to our website.
So, and uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone that's here, and please stand by for more discussions.